Hi everyone, Jackie with Full Moon Loom Designs and today I'm going to be working on a video putting together the cheese boards using the cutting boards that I had purchased from webstrantstore.com and my various glass panels that I put together to make the glass portion of these. Uh, I know you never see me on camera, this is why I'm never in makeup, I don't usually do much with my hair, but I had to show my State Fair t-shirt from a couple weeks ago get it corn dog <laughs> so today i'm going to be working on this video it'll be in a couple of parts so on my facebook page you'll probably see part of it released first and then when i get everything done i'll put it up on youtube thanks everyone all right so i have pretty much everything set up here uh, a couple other things i'll be using in the process i have some just uh, like exam gloves here for when i'm actually working with this oil to put on that's not going to be until later. I did, uh, <laughs> I had a t-shirt that I ruined with my first sublimation on uh, glitter attempt. So I thought, ah, soft cloth. So I just cut that up. I've got pieces of that. I do have butcher block oil for later on. I have these wonderful cutting boards I got from webstaurantstore.com. Uh, they are on sale from time to time, and sometimes you have to buy a certain lot quantity. I did not have to when I bought these, and they were actually on sale for $2.99 a piece. So I thought that was an excellent price to be able to then take them and make them into something else. So I've got the board. I'll be removing that plastic. I have various panels here. These are the glass panels. I need to clean them up a little bit yet. You can see that. And I'm going to show you a little trick. I don't know if you can hear this. So I always use powder, well, I almost always use powder between my layers. So sometimes I'll get a little bit of a rough edge along these. These things are amazing. And I don't just say that from a 3M perspective, but I really like these both for general cleaning purposes in the kitchen and everywhere, but I really love them in my glass work because I can take these and clean off the edges and I'll show you that here as well. And it doesn't scratch the glass. So I'm gonna be using that. Uh, I have some two-part epoxy and I could not find the 3M type. I, I do look for it when I can. Um, I have used this before, the JB Weld Clear Weld. It does work well. Um, it cures in an hour. I'm gonna let these set longer than that before I stain or before I put the oil on most of them, but I'll probably just let it set when I do the first one just for demonstration purposes. These come in a couple different sizes. So this one is a little bit larger and if I'm gonna be doing a few things, like I have several of these I could be working on today, I would open this one. If I'm only doing maybe a few jewelry bales or something like that, I'll use these smaller ones. I think I got these at Menards, um, but they carry them in a lot of different places like your home improvement store. So have an adhesive that works well. Whatever you use, you wanna make sure that it works with glass and wood. And I think that might be just about it. So I'm gonna kind of walk through what I'm gonna do. Oh, I also have a, I have a, excuse me, I have some paper towels for cleaning. I don't have one of my flower sack towels in here right now. I have a plate that I'm gonna use, just a paper plate. Uh, you could use a scrap piece of cardboard, something to mix that epoxy up on. And I will be using a popsicle stick or craft stick to do that. And actually, I think they come with a little stir stick inside. So today, just for this demonstration, I'm only going to be opening the smaller one. I'm going to be doing most of these probably my next trip up north where I don't really have the ability to work on glass stuff, but I can certainly work on finishing. So to start, I'm going to open this guy up. I'm not going to mix this quite yet because I do want to clean off a couple of panels first and get a couple of boards ready to go. I can already see I need to move my trash. <laughs> so there's that. There is this, I rarely ever use this. I, I usually just mix it up and then take a little bit with my craft stick, popsicle stick to apply it. So I'm going to set that aside for the moment. I am going to open up the first board here.
And you could do this with other cutting boards or pieces of wood. I originally wanted to use some of the Dollar Tree, uh, just the little bamboo boards, but they were really hard to find for a while. I think they're starting to carry them again. But then I saw these and they're just such a nice uh, thick piece. When I do make them, I am going to be adding a spreader with them and I don't have one of those in front of me, but I'll, I'll share one before the end of the video. Um, but yeah, these are already nicely smooth. So I don't really have to do much of anything. I'll probably wipe it down uh, before I, or I'll probably actually just wipe it down and make sure I have no fingerprints or anything all over it. I'm gonna set that aside for now. The other thing I am going to do is uh, before I, I set up the epoxy on my glass, once I have this all cleaned off, I'm gonna lay it down and I'm gonna figure out where it needs to go and then probably just apply some painter's tape as a border just for a guideline when I'm putting it down and then that'll easily pull back up. So I'm gonna pause the camera and get a couple things together here and we'll resume with putting some of this together. Okay, so a couple things I realized I didn't mention in the beginning. Uh, the reason I am not doing the butcher block oil first is because I don't want anything to impede with that epoxy curing so that it gets a nice adhesion down here to the board. So what I plan to do is uh, glue the board down first, let it cure, and I'm probably not gonna realistically do the butcher block step uh, or oil step until like the next day, but today I will demonstrate on one of them uh, once it has set well enough. So no oil first, just the glue step. The other thing I wanted to mention, um, some of you may have seen on my Facebook page, I did these pieces with the petrified wood. This one's pretty dirty right now with fingerprints, um, bullseye. And this one is two uh, layers of three millimeter glass. So it's a little bit heavier. Most of my cheese board panels I've been making with uh, one layer of three mil and one layer of two millimeter. Um, they're just not quite as heavy. They don't need to be super thick for this. Um, but the other thing I will add is that on these bullseye pieces, I did not use powder in between the layers because I did not want to interfere with any of the beautiful reactions that happen there in the glass. So this one's really pretty clean on the back. I don't really need to do anything at all with this one except clean it before I apply the epoxy. And then these panels here are some of the other ones that I have done where I used, uh, in this case, I used white, uh, thin white. Uh, as a base because I thought it made this green uh, pop a little bit more. This is one of the newer uh, Fusers Reserve and this one's very dusty at the moment uh, with the adventuring green in it and it just sparkles beautifully. So that one I do need to use the little scouring pad scrubby on there and I'll, I'll walk through that in a second. And then these same thing. This one had a little bit of powder on top and then some clear powder over that. Uh, and as I'm looking at this one, I Nope, oh, maybe it's just a line in the glass. I thought I saw a crack in there, but now I don't see it. They were all uh, full fused and annealed, and I could share my schedule at the end with uh, how I'm doing these if you would like to see that, or I'll put it in the comments. But it's it's really just one firing. It's just to fuse them together, and I, I do do a, a full fuse. And in fact, I even went with a deep fuse on some where I was using components, and I'll, I'll share those once I get them cleaned up in another video. So today I'm going to start by cleaning one of these and I think for demonstration purposes, I am going to use, actually I'm gonna use this green one. It's just so pretty. So again, if you can hear that, my finger dragging along, it's just little rough edges because there was clear powder between the two layers. So I am going to open up this. Again, if you did not catch that earlier, these are made by Scotch-Brite. It's a 3M brand stainless steel scrubbies. They make them in the stainless steel. They also make them in copper. Uh, if you have uh, copper bottom pans, they work awesome. And I don't even remember when I first tried this with glass, but discovered that it didn't scratch it and it removed all of the scratchy roughness there. So I'm just gonna take it and just run it along the edges. And I can already feel that's much smoother. 
And of course, if you're ever doing this on a top surface, you probably want to test a little area. I have used them on the top surface and not seeing scratches, but of course you would want to test that in an area that's maybe not as noticeable or on a scrap piece of glass of the same type. Just a little bit there. Still feel just a few little burrs there. And really because this is getting epoxy down, I really don't even have to worry about it that much. I just wanna make sure my edges here are nice and smooth. I could also do this with a diamond pad and water. Uh, I don't think I need to go that extreme for this. This one's already pretty smooth. This one's pretty good. Now we're just gonna clean it well with, uh, I use just straight alcohol in a spray bottle. All right, and as you can see, yeah, this one's pretty grimy at the moment. I usually do use flour sack towels so I don't go through so many paper towels when I'm cleaning glass, uh, but for this, Little paper towel's not gonna hurt. I'll be able to reuse them. I don't have to worry about getting every single fingerprint off of here right now because obviously I'm gonna be handling it and I'll clean it again when it's all completely done. I just want it to look as good as it can. I want this surface to be clean for sure. And then like I said, I'll wipe down the wood board. And now what I wanna do is Set it down for placement purposes. And I have a couple things here. I have painter's tape, but I also have, and it's a type of painter's tape as well, this, oh, I can't remember the name of it, but it's like the vinyl, it's like for applying pinstriping and that, I think, on cars. I was in the automotive section of our store. And I'm just gonna cut some pieces that I can use as borders here. I'm not really measuring it, it's really more eyeballing it. Of course, you can be much more precise. And I'm just putting it there as a means to see where I'm lining up my glass when I put it down so that I don't move it around and get the epoxy smearing onto the wood where I don't want to see it. leave those guys hanging off of there make it easy to remove and really at this point now really all I need to do is just maybe do one side I did make my panels uh, four and a half by eight seem to work well for this board depending on what you're gonna use if you're trying this uh, you'll just want to adjust it accordingly but pretty uh, simple project as far as fusing. It's just two panels and again most of the time I do use uh, clear powder between layers. I just did not on the bullseye petrified wood pieces. So now I've got a guide there for when I set this down so I'm not moving it all around. It may not be 100% accurately centered but we're gonna go with it. Now set it aside. I am going to take my epoxy. I believe I've got to snip the end off here. Excuse my reach. I am trying my new Revo setup today, so I've got the camera up above me a bit today. Hoping this works. Can't remember if these pull off or if they have to be snapped off. I know they come with a little, on the bigger tubes, yeah, they come with a, a cap that goes over, but yeah, this is actually one you gotta snip off. Okay, that should be ready. Feeling a little clumsy here today, excuse me. I'm 
I'm really butchering this one, but this is one of the small ones. So whatever I get out of it today, uh, if I have anything left over, I, I'm not going to save it. Sometimes I wear gloves because I don't really like getting this onto my fingers. Uh, I'm not going to for this step today, but you want to push out, probably blocking your view, kind of an equal amount of both sides. And right now the one side is being a little fussy. All right, there we go. Usually I'll set this aside kind of upright, just back here for now. You can, hopefully you can see that. You can see one that has a little more yellowish tint than the clear. I'm gonna mix that up. This is probably just enough for this one here. I don't need a ton of it. I just want to put a nice bead on there. And I suppose that's where the little uh, tip might have worked. I, I don't know if it would actually mix it as it goes in there. I, again, I've never used that. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in just a little, a little bit in from the edges because I don't need it to all just squeeze out when I apply it. And I actually might not have mixed up enough, but we'll see. double checking to make sure I was recording. I've done this before where I've set everything up and then realized I uh, did not hit record. All right. And anything extra here, I'll just scoop up, kind of go through the center. I would think as long as you've got a nice application around your edges, you should be good. So I'm gonna set this aside. And I've got my board. Line it up with my guide and maybe just straighten it a little bit. And at this point, you could apply clamps or just set some weight on it. Uh, I did not bring my larger clamps up, and I think these little ones I have are not going to work for this. Mm, probably not, but let's see. Yeah, not really. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna stand up and actually make sure that I get this straight before it starts to set. I'm gonna remove my tape carefully and see, I can already see that I did have some geek out one end here. So I wanna clean that up before it dries. And I bumped it. But as you can see, this stuff removes very easily. And I could even flip this over if I wanted and put something over the wood part. But at this point, I think I am going to leave it. Let's see if I've got a... Take a Q-tip with a little bit of alcohol. cleaning up that little bit of epoxy that geeked out of there. And I think that one looks good. And I apologize for the reflection now. I just realized that's on the glass. Hopefully you can see that. And that is how I'm going to assemble them. I'm gonna let that sit and cure. And I will probably uh, do a couple, three more off camera, but I'll be following the same process. And then once they're set up, I'm gonna start applying uh, coating them with a little bit of butcher block. Uh, I think it's just an oil. It's just wipe on, wipe off. It does have instructions for wiping it on, letting it set, sanding it. I'm going to see how it looks just wiping it on, to be honest. Um, but if we do, looks like it needs to be sanded, I, 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 I will do that as well. Excuse me. So I'm going to shut the camera off. I'm going to let this sit up a bit, work on the others. And when I come back, I'll show applying the oil. Okay, so that smaller tube or smaller package of the epoxy 
I was able to get three boards done. So these have set up. This one I feel like it's slightly off center. Well, hopefully the beauty of the piece takes away from that. This one looks pretty good. And I, they set up, the stuff sets in about five minutes. You have about five minutes working time, or yeah, set time is five minutes. So when these had each been put down after they set for a couple, three minutes, I was able to just slightly move them if they had slid. I know when I had them sitting on the edge of this table, I think it slopes back a little bit and they were kind of sliding. So I moved them over to my desk while they first cured or first set up. And now this is what they're gonna look like um, before applying the oil. So I just thought I would share that. Okay, I have got one of the boards ready to apply some of the butcher block oil. I did give the can a good shake first and then I opened it up and I've got a just a chopstick here that I'm just making sure it's stirred well. This does say on here that it's it's uh, used in applications where you need a food safe surface. So on my glass, the colors where I, I knew or wasn't sure about, I did apply uh, clear powder to also uh, make the glass itself food safe. But I'm gonna start this today. I'm actually gonna work on the back side to apply it and then I'm going to let that set and then flip it over later and get the top and the sides and I'll probably get a little over onto the sides in this application as well so I'm just going to it says to apply with a soft cloth kind of looks like thin honey hopefully I'm not blocking it I got a bit more onto the cloth than I needed to. I'm seeing it all over my paper. I just have some uh, <clears throat> this brown craft paper that comes in packaging. Sometimes I had a pile of it to recycle and I thought, well, this is a perfect use for it. This really doesn't have a smell or much of it, uh, but you probably, uh, oh, well, you always want to follow safety precautions. Uh, if you're sensitive to this stuff, especially, you might want to have your window open or use it outside. I can smell it. It's just, it's not strong. And I'll be going over it all again, but I just really wanted to make sure I got this backside coated well. Just a bit more. And I'm just now rubbing it with the green. And honestly, with this, these boards, I don't think I'm gonna need to do the sand and reapply step, but I do wanna make sure that I get them nice and well covered, just gives it a nice sheen. And I'll be going over the edges again when I do the other side. So hopefully you can see that. I'm gonna let it sit. Then I'm going to flip it over and apply it to the other side. I'll go ahead and do the other two uh, while this one is sitting. Okay, so I have applied the oil to the back side of three of the boards and around the edges. I did find a couple of edges kind of up along the handle that might need just a little bit of sanding. So I'll see how they look after they've sat and dried. I'm going to take a look at the instructions again on this. It says to allow six hours dry time before recoating. I don't know if we're gonna need to recoat, but I'm gonna let them sit for the rest of the afternoon um, and I may flip them over and do the back, the front sides of them uh, later this evening off camera, but it'll be the same application process. So maybe you can't really tell much here, but if you look at them compared to, this is just a dry board, uh, no oil, no oil applied. So you can see it does add a nice little sheen to it. So I'm gonna let those dry and then I'll do the, I'll flip them over, do the front side. And then tomorrow I hope to have picked up some leather cord and I'll show you how I'm gonna finish them off. <laughs> 